Hello and welcome to part two of me trying to fix four faulty Nintendo Switches. I know I only have two Nintendo Switches here, but this is episode number two of two parts. For all four Nintendo Switches, I paid a total of £200. However, in today's video, we're trying to fix these two. So for that reason, we're saying £50 for each Nintendo Switch. They were listed on eBay as faulty no power, so they don't power on. My job today is to see if I can fix them and then sell them for a profit. A link to part one of the video will be linked down below. Blue map Pat to the rescue. And we're gonna start with this Switch. Okay, how are we looking? condition wise screen looking really really good we have the two screws at the bottom and the screw at the top the four nintendo switches i purchased were from the same seller and to be honest the four that he's listed in the listing have been spot on condition wise do we have a faulty charging port perhaps let's go over to the microscope because i can't really see anything through this view all right let's get the focus correct that looks absolutely fine oh do i see okay it doesn't look fine because by the looks of it we have water damage it's been a while since i've had a water damaged nintendo switch and it looks like my time has come how's the actual port itself the integrity of the port uh a little bit loose and you can see that the clasp here at the top is broken so it will need to be changed because of this liquid damage we have here i'm not going to go ahead and plug in my ammeter you're probably thinking jay why are you throwing all of these like silly words at me this is my ammeter. I plug the official Nintendo charger into the ammeter via USB-C and then this USB-C goes into the Nintendo Switch. It basically gives me a heads up as to what the issue might be. However, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna put any power into this Nintendo Switch because it's quite clearly water damaged. In which case, we'll go ahead and disassemble the Switch and see how bad this really is. Before we do that, I do wanna check. Let's check SD card first. Unfortunately, no SD card. Do we have a game? No, we don't, that's unfortunate. Okay, yeah, let's get this disassembled. A huge thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring today's video. PCBWay offer many different services for all of your DIY needs. You can print your custom PCBs in more ways than one, and you can also use them for CNC machining, 3D printing, and even injection molding. Sign up using the referral code in the description and you'll get $5 of new user free credit. Let's get back to the video. <laughs> Okay, first impressions, you can see here, this little pink slash purple bit of paper is a water indicator. So when water goes onto the actual main motherboard of a Nintendo Switch, this will turn pink. Usually it's a solid white. First things first, we definitely disconnect this battery and it doesn't look like any water damage has gone onto the battery, which is really, really good. We might have just got lucky. I'm thinking it's gone into the port down here and maybe it's blown the M92 T36 charging IC. I can't see as good as you guys at the moment because I'm looking through a viewfinder on my DSLR camera. So I'm gonna carry on taking this apart and get the board out of the chassis. Taken the motherboard out, but I just want to note one thing. I think we are in a bit of trouble. Look at the state of this. <laughs> that is not looking great. This is the ribbon cable for the right Joy-Con. Uh, the backlight connector itself seems to be fine. Doesn't look like we have any liquid damage on that. The LCD connector is also fine. No liquid damage on that. I think we have a small bit on the power and volume up buttons. You can see here on this ribbon cable. And what about this ribbon cable here for the left Joy-Con rail? That also looks absolutely fine. Okay, I'm trying to find evidence of where the liquids come in. This is at the top of the chassis. So I don't know if maybe it's happened here. You can see a little bit of liquid damage on the left there. Where the actual port is, it doesn't look that bad. I mean, maybe a little bit down the bottom as well. Okay, so let's go over to the board and inspect that. All right, tell me a story. What do we have? Okay, so we have quite a bit of corrosion around, not around the BQ chip as such, but just below it, you see on these caps here. Zoom in a bit more, it might make it easier. There we go, yeah, you can see the corrosion around the capacitors um, around this chip here. Okay, interesting. The actual port itself, yeah, you can see that we have the corrosion in between the pins as well. We have some corrosion here around these little chips. What about M92, how are we looking? Oof, okay, we've been hit. M92 has seen better days. The good thing is, I know corrosion is never good, right? But the good thing is, this still looks like early signs of water damage. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to fix this, but I am gonna try. That right there looks like 
thermal paste rather than liquid. This is the FPC connector linking to the ribbon cable I just showed you on screen for the right Joy-Con, I believe. You can see there's a little bit of corrosion there. Move up to the board to where the LCD connector is. Maybe a little bit just on the left. Move over, oof, okay, we have quite bad damage here as well. We have the FPC fan connector, and this again is where the power and volume up and down is. Turn it around to the back of the board. This is what I'm scared of. Okay, you see liquid damage. Nothing massive around P13, just maybe around this filter here. Oh, wow, well, yeah, look, I mean, caps, caps. Nothing on the back of the CPU, which is good. More corrosion up here. Corrosion hit heavy corrosion here, actually. That could be quite bad under these components. A little bit here. I didn't check this side, actually. These components all seem to be okay. As always, let's get this USB-C charging port off and then I can come in and do some tests around some of the components to see, for example, if we have a blown M92 T36 or if the BQ charging chip is also blown. And to be honest, we might get away with just giving it a nice clean and obviously replacing the charging port. Got ourselves a rather nice, nice, got ourselves a rather nice clean pull there, which is good. Meter is in continuity mode, which is the mode that beeps when we have a complete circuit. And we're just gonna have a look around for some shorts. So I'm gonna test the fuse first to make sure that that's okay. Okay, is it gonna, is it playing me about like it usually does or does it genuinely just not work? Okay, maybe, okay, the fuse. I think seriously, the fuse is gone. Let me just scrape away any like dry flux we have. Okay, the fuse is definitely gone. Oh, maybe that's all that's wrong with the switch then, just this little fuse. Because the liquid damage has gone all the way around the board and it's gone, no, nah, I don't like it. And it's blown the fuse. And that's what's caused this to maybe just stop charging the unit. Okay, so the fuse is gone in this one. The indestructible fuse is no longer so indestructible. Let's check around M92 T36, see if we have any shorts around here. No, we don't. Wow, so far anyway. If M92 is blown 90% of the time, it's these caps here. Wow. I think we got extremely lucky. These caps seem to be fine. Yeah. Okay, so we don't have, so far anyway, on the face of it, we don't have a blown M92 T36 chip. Let's check BQ. Okay, BQ's gone. You see here, this area here isn't meant to be shorted to ground. This is, I think, or it might be the other way around. One of these sides isn't meant to be shorted to ground, that's for sure. But as you can hear, we have a short on this cap. Check the rest of the components. They all seem fine. Okay, so I don't know whether that's a shorted BQ or whether it's something else on the board. I think I remember Northridge actually saying that this cap is usually linked to the Max IC chip over here. So let me just measure around here, see if I've got any shorts. Maybe, is that a short? That is a short. That's 14 ohms, so this isn't a short here, but this cap is coming out at zero ohms on both sides. So we have a short to ground on this cap here. Okay, and that's zero as well. So maybe it's the max I see here that is shorted, which in turn could be causing this cap to be shorted. Our best way of knowing this, which I will check in a second, is if I inject power into this side of this cap here, like I said, I think, this side is ground. I'll tell you what, I've got a donor board here, right? And it's not the prettiest. So this side here is meant to be grounded. This side isn't. So the plan will be to just inject voltage here and it should show us where exactly that short is coming from. My guess is the max IC. I think then, first things first, let me inject power into that cap. I'm only gonna start with one volt and one amp just to see if anything's getting hot. I can use my flare cam to see where that short is potentially coming from. If it doesn't show me, I'm just gonna have to start pulling components off the board. If I'm able to find the short, I replace that component, then I'll give the board a complete clean and maybe, just maybe, we'll be able to fix a water damaged Nintendo Switch. All right, so I'm just gonna inject one volt here. We get a one amp draw straight off the bat. So what I need to do then is grab my flur cam and it's gonna tell us where this short is. Okay, I've injected again and this is a bit of a heat spot up here. And then when I take it off, I take it off now, you can see that the temperature falls right back down. To be honest with you, I think we found our culprit. I think it's this here, which is on the back of where we were just getting that heat signature. But look, I think this, here is just falling apart to be honest yeah it is look so this had a this had a hole in it so this is what was getting hot so i'm going to quickly take this off the board and see if that gets rid of our short around bq okay i'm just gonna to have to smooth that out 
There we go, now it's not, perfect. Let's go ahead and check if our short is gone around the BQ area here. What do we think? Moment of truth. Meter in continuity mode again. We still got it. Okay, it's coming up as 14 ohms. It's not coming up as a dead short anymore, it's coming up with 14 ohms. I'll maybe bridge that cap with that inductor there. Okay, let's check now, is it gone? No, still a 14 ohm short, okay. I'm gonna inject again and see if I'm still getting a high amp draw. So I'm now getting 80 milliamps. What I'm thinking is that maybe because we've removed the component down here, we're now only getting 80 milliamps. So I think it was the shorter component because the short has gone. Now I'm getting 14 ohms as a reading here instead of zero. So I'll replace this component here. Then I'll clean up any other corrosion slash liquid damage that we have on the board. And then I'll give it another test. So basically, Q the montage. Now I'm gonna see if I still have a short on this cap. I do, 15 ohms. I'm gonna remove BQ and see if that gets rid of this short because even though I'm injecting heat and it's showing elsewhere on the board and theoretically that should then indicate the problem. Don't know if BQ's the culprit here. So let's do that. Okay, BQ's been removed. So that's the ground pad here. Let's see if we still have the short. We do, we still have the short, okay. So it wasn't BQ, it's still coming in at 15 ohms. All right, I think I'm gonna have to call it there with that one and deem it a no fix. I'd like to save it perhaps and we can look at it on a stream altogether. In a day where I have more time, it might be nice to just start pulling random components to see whatever alleviates that short. Alas, we have not fixed our switch number three. There had to be one, there had to be one. Let's move on to our fourth and final switch. Nintendo Switch number four is again, just glistening with raw beauty. Not very many scratches at all on the back. The screen itself, a little bit smudged, but looking in very, very good condition. Again, we have all the screws necessary. They haven't been touched, so it doesn't look like this device has been opened. Hopefully it's not water damaged like the switch we've just looked at. Do we have an SD card? No. Do we have a game? No. How does the charging port look? Let's go over to the scope. Are we looking clean? As a whistle, this charging port, uh, ooh, maybe a little bit of water damage there. I don't know. Uh, hmm, I don't think so. I don't think that is water damage. It looks pretty clean to me. Maybe the slightest. In which case, I'm gonna take it apart. I'm not gonna plug in my ammeter just yet. If the water indicator sticker has turned pink to indicate water, I won't put my ammeter in. If not, I'll go ahead and put the ammeter in. Oi, 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 okay, we have a little bit of water down here and this is on the metal chassis. Maybe the last two of two of these Nintendo Switches are gonna be water damage. Okay, how are we cooking? Good looking. Water damage indicator is still polka dot, which means that it's okay. There is, however, some water damage down here and just along this whole edge of the Nintendo Switch. For that reason and that reason alone, I don't wanna go ahead and give this power. So I'm gonna get the board out of the chassis. Whoa, 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 what on earth? Has happened here. What is that? Corrosion? It's like on the fan as well. Maybe liquid's gone through the top grill and then onto here? What? But there's nothing on the board from what I can see. I personally think the other side of this board is gonna be horrendous. Okay, the board's out of the chassis and if we turn it over, I'm looking through the viewfinder again so it's difficult for me to tell. Um, I don't know if I can actually see any liquid damage. You guys are probably shouting at me saying, Joey, there's liquid damage everywhere. I can see a tiny bit down here, but I don't think that's affecting any components. Oh, wait a minute, there's quite a bit. Oh, okay, which makes sense because this is where the fan was and it has a funny color. Let's go under the scope and take a closer look at this area. Oi, oi, oi. Okay, corrosion explosion down here. This is the max IC, which is definitely gonna cause the, the switch to not power. Oh, dear. These are, these are just pads here. This is obviously a capacitor. 
Uh, I don't know this little component here might be affected. Okay, let me just take a mental note of where all of this is. Is there any corrosion underneath this BGA? I don't think so, which is obviously good news. What about the rest of the board? The rest of the board is, uh, oh no. This is the back of the CPU. What's happened here? Oh guys, this might be just a straight up, <laughs> can't fix it unfortunately. This might be a straight up loss. Oh no. Look, this cap just fallen off. Oh no. I mean, we had a really good run of just no liquid damage devices, and then we get two in a row. Unfortunately, I don't have an ultrasonic cleaner which would uh, which would do this job justice. But I also think that it's way too far gone. Yeah, you can see there is just this liquid around the back of the CPU. Yeah, I think this is just absolutely gone. There's no point in me spending uh, the time that I need to try and fix this when you look at the back of the CPU and you see all of this, as well as all this corrosion here, plus up here. I'm not even gonna say we're gonna attempt this one in a live stream, I'm just gonna call it there and say that I'm gonna use this for donor parts, if I can see something that doesn't actually have liquid damage on. I could spend time and effort just trying to rectify every single little component on here, but I still wouldn't sell this for a profit. There would be no point. There's no guarantee that this switch is gonna last even a week, even if I do manage to get it fixed, which I probably wouldn't. So I think it makes sense to just call it on that one, unfortunately. Let's go over to Sally the spreadsheet and see where that leaves us. The first two switches that we had were amazing. I just kind of got lucky in the order that I picked and the last two I obviously haven't been able to fix. This is the gross profit for part one and all I need to do is simply update the cost to say that it was 200 pound rather than 100 pound and we actually make a loss in total of around about 38 pounds. If I took out the cost of parts and eBay fees, I'd be looking at breaking even. But because I used parts in the previous video to fix the first and second switch, unfortunately that generates us quite a significant loss. Hope you enjoyed this mini two-part series. And if you did, I can assure you would like something like this, where I try and fix more faulty eBay items and sell them on for a profit. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.